because normally I can't actually see my hand stitches as I'm doing them in the viewfinder. Hello folks, welcome to another video with me, Stephanie Canada. No, I'm not in Canada. I live in Florida. In today's video, I'm going to be addressing a topic that I get asked quite frequently, which is which hand stitches do I do the most? If you enjoy vintage sewing, humor, and some heavy doses of sarcasm, please do hit that subscribe button now. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a question that you guys ask me quite frequently, which is which hand stitches do I use most frequently? I realize I'm sort of bad about showing you guys anything but machine sewing, because normally I can't actually see my hand stitches as I'm doing them in the viewfinder. So I'm going to attempt today to do a nice detailed view so that you guys can see all of the hand stitches that I do up close and personal. And as a bonus, I'm going to use reference material direct from my 1954 Singer sewing book. You guys know this if you've been on this channel for more than 30 seconds. Now as we go along today, I am going to pop on up some timestamps here so that you guys can see which hand stitches are at what time. I'll also put them down in the description box below so that if you have a particular hand stitch that's giving you problems, you can jump right to it. So let's go ahead and grab that coffee and let's get sewing. Slip stitch. For invisibility rather than strength, as in hems, folds, or facings. Turn hem and baste near turned edge. Then turn under raw edge and stitch for firmness. Catch needle in a thread of fabric and then in hem turn, keeping stitches easy unless fabric is heavy. Where no strain occurs, stitches may be one half inch apart. In heavy fabrics or in skirt hems, place close together. And before you come after me in the comments, because yes, I would too, I could have switched to white thread over the white labels, however, I'm far too lazy to do that. Now occasionally I would have issues trying to catch just one thread in this tablecloth, however, I actually am quite pleased with the final turnout. You can see a couple of the stitches that I made, but nothing that says, do me over again. Overcast seam. Overcast seam edges by hand, taking several stitches on needle before pulling needle out. This is for speed and evenness. When fabric is loosely woven and consequently frays deeply, single stitch should be taken. Overcast edges separately when seam is pressed open. If both edges are turned to one side, as sometimes in tailoring and under a pleat, overcast together. Now overcasting is one of those skills that I would qualify under my still needs work category. While I was able to do vaguely even stitches, I adjusted the depth multiple times over this run. And for those of you who can't quite see the red on red, there is a section down here where I do red on white to help you see what I'm doing. The reason I chose this stitch instead of pinking my edges like I would normally do is because this frayed really terribly and I knew it would need some type of other enforcement rather than just pinking shears, which would probably have made it fray faster. And just like that, I have now managed to pull it too tightly, which is not what you want when you overcast, so I'm gonna make sure I loosen up those stitches before continuing on. And I'm also going to show you how I quickly do my little knot at the end. Just a simple single stitch, three loops around your needle, and Bob's your uncle. You've got yourself a knot. Back 
back stitch. Use a short needle. Take a stitch through the fabric. Then put needle in halfway back through the first stitch and take another stitch underneath. This makes a long forward stitch on underside and a short backward stitch on surface. Continue all along the sewing line. Now for this stitch, it is on a rather wiggly bit of rayon dress. It had a little hole in the underarm, and I took this opportunity to mend it, despite it trying to wiggle around and sneak away from me. I did opt to use a double thread for this, so to give it a little bit of oomph while going along its life as a vintage dress. All in all, I was quite pleased with the end result. Running Stitch Use a long, slim needle, size 7 or 8. Weave point of needle in and out of fabric several times before pulling thread through. Working quickly helps keep stitches uniform. Work for evenness first, then speed. Use for seaming, gathering, tucking, mending, quilting, and many kinds of delicate work. Now here on this same rayon dress, you see a little bit of the waistband that has sort of popped away for some reason. So what I'm opting to do is do a hidden running stitch, going backwards and forwards. Sort of like a back stitch, but not really. There's also little tiny holes that are along the same waistband that I'm trying to avoid. And the back stitch wasn't really going to allow me the feasibility and maneuverability that I was looking for. So once I get past the point where the stitching begins again, I'm going to double back on myself so that I can do another running stitch coming back in the same direction. And this one to get started again is rather wiggly and finicky because, well, rayon never wants to stay where you put it. Catch stitched hem. Firm, evenly woven fabric may be finished with a plain or pinked edge, and then catch stitched in place. Favored for holding coat or jacket hems in place when garment is lined. Now for those of you that are at home playing the home game going, Stephanie, why in heaven's name are you using black on black? Well, because I thought I would kill two birds with one stone and hem the mock-up dress that I had from the liquor label dress shenanigans, and also do this video at the same time. However, I realized about halfway through that there was no way you were to be able to see what I'm doing. So here, let's go ahead and switch to some red thread so you can actually see what I'm doing. Now the instructions do primarily say to use this on coats and jackets with linings, although this is the stitch that I was taught early on to hem things with, so I'm not sure if maybe things just changed or if the people that taught me just opted to use whatever was easiest for them. Unclear. But for better or worse, it's what I use. Hand slip stitched hem. When seam binding is not used, but you want invisibility, make this hem. Turn up hem, baste along fold. Even the hem, turn under raw edge, and stitch free from garment using machine basting. Fold hem back along top edge and slip stitch, picking up only a thread in the garment and taking long stitch along the fold in top of stitching edge. Make stitches easy so that they will not draw or show on right side. For this one, while I couldn't have been bothered to actually baste the end of this skirt, I did go ahead and press it up a half inch so that I would have a nice strong edge to start from. 
And while I am not the best at this hem, I do think it actually does provide a little bit better in visibility, but I wonder how it would look if you were to hem an entire skirt with it, as far as the maneuverability of the hem as it adjusts around throughout the day. That's part of why I like the catch stitch version, because I feel like it gives it more sway and a little bit more play as opposed to this one, which seems a bit more rigid and you shall stay there. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed my five favorite hand stitches today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to click that like button. Being sure to hit the subscribe button as well. I see how many of you aren't subscribed. And turning on the bell for post notifications. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. See y'all next time. In today's video, I am going to be discussing all of the favorite hand stitches that I do. You guys have asked repeatedly. Mm, nope. 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 All of- no. If vintage sewing- Now as I go along, I am go- Ooh, what side actually has better? This side, shockingly. Uh, I- I know, I'm really bad. I'm really great about showing you guys all the mas machine sewing- While I don't really know why other than the fact that I'm really bad about showing you guys my hand stitching. Uh-huh. <laughs>